Hi, my name's Donna, and welcome to Love Rocks. We're going to be painting a Christmas penguin today, and we'll be beginning with a flat rock that I have stenciled with the penguin. I use folk art paint, uh, multi-surface, and I'm showing you here the different colors that you can use, but you can definitely use whatever you have on hand. Once you have your rock prepared by cleaning it and using alcohol on it to make sure that you don't have any oils, you're going to start with filling in all of the areas with the first layer of color. Since I'm leaving the background natural, be careful to stay within the lines, but this first layer is your base layer of color. The next two layers will be more important. As you can see here, we're just going from area to area and making sure that it's got a good base coat. You wouldn't have to do this if you wanted to paint the back side of your rock first and put a base coat on the entire rock. But I kind of enjoy looking at these with the natural rock shining around the edges of my creations. As you're going through this and painting each area, you'll notice that it looks very blocked. But we're going to go back in and we're going to do some shading, some highlighting, and put some borders around the picture that we're painting, as well as some detail. Please enjoy doing this and don't be too uptight. It's something that you can do with a very relaxing flow, as long as you don't allow yourself to get too serious. I started with the penguin because it seems to be a pretty easy project, but he really does turn out very cute. This is a project that you could do with younger children as well. I've done several of these on different colors of rocks, and at the end of the video, I'll make sure and show you a different, a different view of the same picture on a different color of rock. I also will make sure and put in the bio what kind of paints and brushes that we used. Most of the time I use a fine detail brush. I think it's an 03, but I also use the five and the 10 as well. I seem to have a better control with the smaller brushes. I've also used the lining pins, the acrylic pins, but I don't feel like I have as much control as I do with the brush. Many of these tutorials are geared towards people who don't have a lot of painting experience. I think it's important for people to know that anybody can pick up a brush and paint and enjoy themselves making something beautiful. If you'd like to look at other things that I have painted, you can check out my Instagram, which is Love Rocks. And you can also check out our Facebook page under Love Rocks, both of which have an icon on this video that will send you to that link. So now let's look at where we're at on this little guy. After we put on the first layer, we're going to start adding more paint 
for a second layer just to get rid of the thinness behind that first coat. Start at the top. It doesn't really matter where you begin. I just seem to systematically start at the top and work my way down. When you put on the second layer, again, be careful to stay as close to the lines as possible. If you do make a mistake, it's easily fixed. We're also going to later do some highlighting. Anybody who doesn't feel comfortable with that can skip over that area of the video, or you can go along with us and see if you can make your highlighting work. It's really not that hard. It just takes some practice. You're basically putting in some lights and some darks and then allowing them to blend as you add more and more paint. This little guy has a red hat. Of course, you can change those colors. Right now we have Christmas, so accordingly he has been painted, but there are other things that can be put on his clothes. I think a cheetah print would be really cute. As we continue to paint his second coat and put in the areas that need to have some extra paint filled in, we're going to add a little bit of detail. As that detail gets added in, you're going to begin to see a picture. It doesn't look so blocked at this point of just having colors. This nose gave me a little bit of trouble, but we finally got it to the point that I wanted it. When you're painting and you do have a smudge or an area that is outside of where you want the lines, just remember you can either paint over that right now if it is a light color and you're gonna add dark, or after it dries, then you can go back over it with some paint and it should cover right up. The only areas that you might have trouble doing that would be along the outside edge where you're gonna leave the rock natural. In the event that you do get something outside of those areas on the natural rock and you feel that you can't cover it, you can always take a wet brush, give it a, a good little scrub, take a paper towel and wipe that area clean. If you don't allow it to dry all the way, most of the time you can get that paint off. We're gonna add a little bit of highlight on this guy's nose. Just remember to work it back and forth. You're gonna put the light on first add a little dark, go back, blend. It's the process we're gonna use when we do all of the highlighting and all of the shading. I'm gonna try to fix that little spot right there. And there is no set amount of times that you can go back over these. Now here's the shading. We're going to take a little bit of the black, add some white, get the color about where you want it. And we're going to begin to shade. You want to shade in all the areas that would normally be the underside of anything. Underside of his face, the underside of his belly, underside of his hat. And we're also going to do the underside of the ball on top of his hat. Now we're going to go back with the lighter color and we're going to mix it in and begin to blend those two colors together. Looks too light, add a little more dark. Looks too dark, add a little more light. Most important part is make sure that when shading, you keep the darker on the bottom, 
the lighter on the top. Other than that, just have fun with it. Enjoy the feeling of playing with the paint. You might even spend some time doing this on a piece of paper. The more you do it, the more it'll just become natural. If shading seems to give you a little bit of anxiety, being a brand new painter, don't do it yet. But I'm telling you, once you get used to it, it really does come second nature. So now we're gonna shade the bottom of his little face. It'll give it depth, it'll give it contour, and it really adds some life to your painting. It looks much harder than it is. Biggest thing is just remembering the darker color goes on the bottom, the lighter color goes on top. And you're really gonna see this when we start doing the highlights because it'll be the opposite. You're now gonna be looking at just the lighter color and, shading and blending it into the original color, which is gonna be, quote, the darker color. Do his little belly. This is gonna give him some roundness. And really show those contours. I like to shade every aspect of my paintings. Some people only want to shade one or two things, but I really like to give it all a good shading or highlights. Once you finish with the belly, we're gonna pull the red and we're gonna do a little highlighting on his hat. Add some white. You're gonna wind up with a weird pink color. It's gonna look a little strange when you first put it on. And you're gonna feel like it's way too light. But remember, we just put a second coat of paint on here and it hasn't dried yet. So add a little more red, bring it in, and just start to blend. And as you blend, you're gonna have that red and that white, or that red and that pink come together. Don't over blend. Um, these, this little hat is presumably cloth. And you wanna have those striations that you see when the pink and the red isn't completely blended perfect. And um, it's really gonna give it some character. Again, rule of thumb, make sure that the, the bottom part of the hat is much darker, top part of the hat much lighter. In the end, it's gonna come out looking really well. Isn't he a cutie? Okay, now start working on putting some highlights to uh, that scarf. I did the same thing. Uh, we mixed a little bit of that green with the white. And let's start putting just some, some areas of highlight. We're gonna come back later and we're gonna put some more defined lines in that scarf with the black that's really gonna pull that out. Now, as you put in those lighter colors, make sure you still leave all those dark green colors. Get those in there. And this is gonna give your scarf a look as though it has been folded. Now let's look at those little feet. This is your second layer of orange. Get that filled in real good. While that is wet, and that's very important, while that's wet, you're going to add a little bit of white to the very top. And since you already have the orange on there and it's wet, you can blend that together slightly and you'll have your highlight on the top of his feet. There are times when you want 
your creations to completely dry before you add another layer of paint, such as when you're doing some of your lines and detail work. Um, if you're doing hair, um, anything that you want that real detailed line for, you're, you're going to want your paint underneath to be dry. When you're blending, it's easier if you do it when it's a little bit wet. It's one of the things that makes this little guy go so fast is most of what I do on him, um, it, it's better if it's wet. So I didn't have to do a lot of waiting for everything to dry in between stages. I am lining now um, some of the areas. Again, this is the 0.03 tipped uh, brush, and I'll leave a link to that. I got it off of Amazon, very inexpensive. Please don't pay a lot of money for your brushes or your paints right at the beginning. Um, learn to paint and, gosh, just enjoy the, the journey before you put a bunch of money into it. You truly don't need very much to start off. And I will tell you, you will be hooked. Now we're gonna put those lines into that scarf. We're just gonna put it along that dark green area. Um, this is really gonna make those folds in the scarf pop out. Sorry, I'm turning it a little too much there. It's hard to see. But as we get those lines on there, you're really going to see that scarf pop out. Um, just a side note on my rocks. These rocks here I got at a big box store. Um, I bought a bag of them. I don't know, I think I paid about 20 bucks for the bag. It's not a huge bag, but it's a fairly good size. And uh, I just got it out in the garden supply. Um, where they had bags of river rock. Um, I think you could get it in two different colors. I got the darker color. Uh, you can also get the lighter color. Okay, once you've got that lined, we're going to go back in and put some little eyes on this guy. Uh, I will tell you, um, I took it out, but I actually got one of the eyes in wrong. And I had it uh, going kind of slanting the wrong way. It just didn't look good to me. If that happens to you, um, you can take any type of instrument with a straight edge on it. I just used a butter knife. And uh, the paint was still wet enough that I was able to take that paint off, repaint it white, put my shading back in, and then put my eye back in and I got it straight the second time. Also, talking about making mistakes, um, you're gonna make mistakes. I make them every single project. So doing these feet, I got the lines a little bit thick. Um, I didn't like how they turned out, so if you do get your line a little thicker than what you want, um, just go back in and add the orange, thin that line out a little, add your highlight again, and then if you need to, put your line back in. There's nothing you can't fix. Very easy. Um, if you see that you've got, I don't know, several layers of paint and you're unable to um, Fix it the way you want it. You can always sand it off as well um, with a, a little piece of sandpaper if it's already dried. If it hasn't dried, you can try to get it off with a little bit of water and a brush. Just if you do that, make sure that you get all the residue off that rock if you're gonna leave it natural. Because once you spray it, it will show up if you don't scrub all that off. Now we're adding some highlights into the black. Um, put a little across his nose, both of his wings. 
again, it just gives some depth and shows where all those little areas are. And it really makes this guy stand out. As you can see, this project's going very quickly. Um, if you need to stop and pause and go back and look and stop and pause and go back and look, you can. I've done that when I'm trying to learn things. So we're just going back and adding a little black to the highlight and then adding a little highlight to the black. Same thing that we did on the hat, on the scarf, just back and forth. Work with that uh, paint until you get it the way you like it. Um, I put on, right now I'm listening to Christmas music, but just put something on and relax and play with your paints. Once you learn how your paint works, um, it'll make it much easier. Another word to the wise, uh, you're, you're not seeing it on the video, but I am dipping my brush often and cleaning it in water and drying it off. Um, reason for that is the paint will start to dry a little bit on the end of your brush and that can cause all kinds of havoc for you. So clean that brush in between uh, colors, in between, gosh, even in between dipping your, your brush if it's starting to get dry. Now here's this little guy and this is the acrylic sealer that I use. Um, I have about four different kinds, but today this is the one I used. And after spraying him, there we go. I want you guys to see the two different colors of rocks and how differently they can turn out. I hope you enjoyed this.